Hi, everybody. This is Yonja Brunini. I work for Google. I run marketing for Google in Europe, Middle East, Africa. I'll be hosting this Hangout today. We've got our special guest stars, Richard Branson from Necker Island. Hi, Richard. And Elon Musk joining us from California. Hi, Elon. Hi. We've also got offices of entrepreneurs from around the world. Johannesburg, hello. And Bogota. Hey. Hey. And we've got Newcastle. Hi. Hey, hi. Hi, everybody. And last but not least, Montego Bay. Hi. So what we'll do is 20 minutes of a chat between Richard and Elon. And then we'll hand it over to the other offices to ask their questions. And we'll wrap it up in an hour. So before I ask the first question, I just want to say how excited I am, both at a personal as well as at a professional level, to be hosting this uh, hangout with two such amazing people. Personal because I come from a country that's very prides itself in being entrepreneurial. I'm Turkish. And I come from a family of entrepreneurs and engineers. And uh, excited at a professional level because the company I work for, Google, has very entrepreneurial roots, a DNA, even though we're much bigger than when we started, uh, very entrepreneurial in our spirits. And we work with uh, millions of small businesses around the world. And it's very much a part of what we're passionate about at Google, but not just these reasons but also to such entrepreneurs who do crazy things and have a healthy disregard for the impossible, just thinking of their space ventures. So that's also very exciting. And not only that, but they um, truly believe and represent that business can be a force for good. So that's all about my excitement. We'll have a lively discussion over the next hour. So I'll just kick off with my first question. Uh, Richard and Elon, uh, there are all these budding entrepreneurs hanging on every word you're going to say, uh, no pressure, and they want to know, I'm sure, what would be your advice in this day's economy and in, in the w way the world economy is today, what would be your advice to them, um, to budding entrepreneurs? Uh, th th since Elon's not speaking, I'll speak. Um, they um, I think if you've got a great idea that you think can improve other people's lives, uh, just just get on and do it. I mean, I, I have a phrase which says, screw it, just do it. And uh, and, and, and that's what I would re recommend. Um, and, uh, and and so, you know, the important thing is, uh, you know, is doing it. Um, there's so many people who come up with great ideas uh, that, uh, you know, are told it's not such a great idea or, or just don't end up doing it. Um, but you know, but but uh, you know, the the key thing is to give it a try. Be full fat in your face. Pick yourself up and try again. Are you being told asked that question, or are you being are you being told that something's impossible and crazy, and you're doing it anyway right now? Um, I think most of, most of these most things that we've done at Virgin, somebody you know, people have said you know it's mad to do it. I mean, when we went into the airline business, when we when we owned a record company. Um, you know, people say, "What on earth is somebody from the entertainment business wanting to start an airline?" And I think you know what they didn't realize was actually people on airlines want to be entertained. They want to have have a you know a, a fun, good experience, which they didn't have when we started the airline business 30 years ago. So I think you know uh, most of most uh, most of the things that we've done, there've been plenty of people who said you know not a good idea. Um, Elon, your turn. Where are you? <laughs> sure. sure. Um... Well, um, I think I think it's 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 important to um, it's to, to I think it's important to take as much feedback as you can from as many people as you can about whatever idea you have. So um, the whole idea about around creating a company is that you 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 you're putting together a group of people to uh, create a product or a service and in order for that, uh, that for it to make sense for that group of people called a company to, to exist, it has to be a really good product or service. Otherwise, there's no point in that company existing. So you want to just be extremely rigorous about making the best possible thing that you can um, and seeking every, uh, try to find everything that's wrong with it and fix it. Um, that's, that's really, really important. So something I often say is you should seek negative feedback. Um, 
particularly from friends. So uh, if you see critical feedback, ask them what's wrong. And you often have to draw it out in a nuanced way to figure out what's wrong, because friends don't want to tell you exactly what's wrong, because they don't want to hurt your feelings. Um, but they often know. And, um, and so that, that can be really helpful. And, and then you keep trying to make it better and better. And, uh, and then if, um, if your product service is sufficiently better than whatever else is out there, or if there's nothing else like it, then the company will succeed. Excellent. Yeah, think, Thank you. Yes, Richard, sorry. No, no, I'm just going to uh, add, add to what Elon just said, and that is it, it's so important to be a good listener. Um, and uh, there, there are too many people who think they know it all um, and like, like hearing their own voice. But uh, be, being a good listener, uh, you, you know, there's, you, you're gonna, you can get so many other ideas from other people to, to uh, work out whether your idea is a good one or not. I'm listening. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So the sec my second, my other question I've been really dying to ask you is, it looks like uh, entrepreneurship is uh, concentrated disproportionately so in some parts of the world. Why is Silicon Valley only in Silicon Valley? Why is Israel so much more entrepreneurial? Shouldn't there be more such places scattered around the world? And should you do something about it? Should we do something about it? Well, I think uh, Elon can start the answer on this one since he's from Silicon Valley. <laughs> um, I certainly yeah, spent you moved to Silicon Valley from South Africa. I mean, yeah. um, so I've spent probably most of my life in Silicon Valley or Silicon Valley-like uh, environments, and um, you know, I think the thing that makes Silicon Valley work is is really the, the people that that it happens to be a concentration of entrepreneurial talent from all around the world. And um, particularly in technology, obviously Silicon Valley is very technology oriented, but there, um, most businesses that start are not are not technology businesses. They're um, in, in in all sorts of other sectors. So, I, mean, I think the reality is that there's a great deal of entrepreneurial activity throughout the world. Um, uh, it just so happens that in in recent decades or recent years, even uh, Silicon Valley has um, ha has gained a lot of uh, awareness because of things like Facebook. Twitter, Google, obviously, um, and, um, and and so so I think it may have a disproportionate awareness in the world because of, of some of those things. Um, and uh, but but it is if you want to start a technology business, if there's there's no place like like Silicon Valley. There's just no place that has um, the infrastructure, you know, whether it's uh, accounting, legal, real estate, um, and it, it's just it's just gotten really good at at uh, at creating companies. Um, however, it should also be said that Silicon Valley, and like most companies in Silicon Valley, fail. So there's a pretty high failure rate of Silicon Valley companies, as there is around around the rest of the world. Um, so it's not as though if you're there, you you will succeed. It's it's a, an extreme Darwinian exercise, I would say, in Silicon Valley. Um, but in, in terms of what the rest of the world can do, to, you know, what sort of a useful, I'm trying to think of a useful thing I could say. Um, uh, it, it's it's do do whatever you can to foster. The growth of, of young small companies because you know a young small company is it's, it's it's like a it's like a little tadpole you know it's, it's got a very it, it's 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 very fragile it's, odds of success are very low so anything that can be done to allow it to grow a little bit um, and to um, sustain itself in the face of much larger companies is extremely important um, and so that would be my advice to say governments or or, or you know on regional state level is do whatever you can to, um, to to shield the smaller companies and allow them to to grow and, and be competitive uh, because the big companies will try to stamp them out and I know I know Richard had a, an incredible battle with with uh, British Airways uh, and uh, and thank goodness uh, you know that 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 worked out his version is awesome so um, and and I, and I yeah that I mean I don't know if Richard if you if that's an anecdote you'd, you'd want to share, but it's it's pretty. I think that 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 whole story of of your battle with British Airways is pretty incredible. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. Well, big companies will try to stamp out small companies, and um, uh, and it's government's role generally uh, to uh, try to um, make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, governments don't always play that role very well, and um, and and therefore. You know, in in the end, it's up to you to 
shout foul and use you know whatever means you can um, to to defend yourself. And um, and when British Airways went to extraordinary lengths to get rid of us, um, we took them to court. Uh, we won. Uh, the biggest sort of libel damages ever uh, in in the British courts, and and British Airways backed off. Um, and you know, if we hadn't done that, I don't think Virgin, you know, Virgin would be a, would be around today. Um, and it was a, a a previous head of an airline, Sir Freddie Laker, who gave me the advice: sue the sue the bastards, if because uh, they will they put him out of business, and they said they will try the same to, to you. Uh, in America, we've we've got United. Doing everything they can to try to get rid of Virgin America by, uh, you know, loading uh, uh, capacity onto all our routes, which where 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 it's going to be very difficult for them to actually make make money. Um, and you know, we're we're fighting our you know fighting our corner hard. Fortunately, uh, the, the the quality of the product is so much better than theirs that um, you know people will go out of their way to travel Virgin America, and therefore, you know, I think we will survive and we will thrive. Um, and you know, and that's an important lesson. You've just got to be the, you've got to be the best, you know, the, the best in your field, as Elon said earlier. Um, I mean, just going back to the original question, I think, um, uh, you know, Silicon Valley has the advantage of being first mover. So they got, they got in there. They, 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 they built a reputation uh, for having great companies, and therefore they attracted people from all over the world who wanted to go and work there. Um, you know, in, in, in a small country like Great Britain, you know, we've urged the government to uh, set up something, uh, uh, you know, where instead of ju just getting grants to go to university, you can get uh, grants from the government to set up um, your business business and um, your business idea. Um, and I think that, you know, that could be fantastic. I mean, uh, you know, if you can get 10, 20,000 pounds to set up your business from the government. Um, or, or, you know, or, or you should you should be able to therefore attract some money from uh, other entrepreneurs as well, and um, and that's all you all you need often to start a business. Um, you know, just just getting that that, that 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 initial seed money. So I think if, if governments could do things like that uh, more around the world, uh, that would be good. Great. Both of you are saying similar things around governments playing a, a bigger role uh, in this. Um, what about failure? You mentioned this earlier, uh, Elon. You were also saying there's a lot of failed startups in um, in Silicon Valley. How how has fail failure played a role in your success, so to speak, uh -huh. or in your careers, so to speak? Um, well, in, in all of the companies that, that I've been involved with, uh, there's always been a, a very difficult time in. Um, it's it, a very difficult time. is usually shortly after the beginning. Actually, it's you know when you first start out the company, things seem very optimistic and rosy and, and exciting. Um, and I think maybe for the first six months to almost a year, um, it's it's pretty good. And then uh, things start to go wrong. Um, this has at least been my experience. Um, and uh, you make mistakes that you, that you encounter issues you didn't expect. You step on landmines, and you, uh, I mean it just it's just uh, it's bad, like, and uh, that. So, like years two through four or five, usually quite quite difficult. Um, and uh, you know, the, 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 there's a friend of mine who's got a saying about starting a company, which is, um, it, it, which is a bit, I think, a, a bit true. It's a, it's it's a bit like um, eating glass and staring into the abyss, um, in that. Uh, in, in the most cases, companies go through this this phase where you've got to you're you're in constant danger of the company dying, just constant. Um, and uh, and then if, if you're the co-founder or CEO, you, you've got to do all sorts of things, all sorts of jobs, like um, and, and tasks that you may not wish to do, that that are not intrinsically interesting to you. And so that's the the eating glass part. Um, there's quite a bit of that too. And if and if you don't do your, don't you do your chores essentially. Then the company will not succeed, um, and um, and and you've really got to be prepared to do do whatever whatever it takes, work whatever hours, um, and and no task is too menial. I think that's the the way it, the, the right attitude for the CEO of a startup. Um, and um, anyway, so that's that that's been the case actually with with every company that I've been a part of. So if you take it say 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 SpaceX. The first three launches that we conducted failed, um, and 
and, and it was it was very very painful exercise, um, and we were just too stupid to know how to make a rocket go to orbit, and um, and I'd actually set aside money for that I budgeted. I thought okay, we could afford three launches, and then the third one failed, um, and and we were just just barely able to scrape together enough money for for a fourth launch, and and this is in late two thousand eight, and it's, and that succeeded. Uh, and if that had not succeeded, the SpaceX would not be around today. Um, in that same time period, uh, Tesla uh, was uh, was raising financing in 2008, and then the whole financial crisis hit, and um, the financing round fell apart. Um, and we just to make a long story short, we, we we were able to finally close a financing round on Christmas Eve 2000. Eight, which was the, the last hour of the last day that a financing could be closed, after which the company would go bankrupt. Um, that was a stressful time, I have to say. Um, so things have things have improved quite a bit since then, but it wasn't that long ago that the companies were almost dead. Yeah, I think. Um well, I, I knew Elon in those days, and uh, uh, and I'm surprised his hair is still uh, is still is still black and not grey. But um, they, um, uh, no, I think, <laughs> I think that um, uh, you know, I think what Elon, uh, uh, what Elon is saying is basically that there's there's a very thin dividing line between success and failure, um, and. Uh, and all that matters when you're building a company is survival. Um, and uh, and if you go the wrong side of that dividing line, um, you're, you're, you're obviously not going to survive. And if you can just stay the right side, you can survive. Um, and at Virgin, um, you know, we've we've had similar situations when we launched the airline. We had a very successful record company. Uh, came back to find the bank manager sitting on our, our doorstep, uh, saying that he will, you know, on the, that, that was on the Friday that he was going to. Or close on the Virgin Group on the Monday, and and we had to you know, scramble over the weekend um, uh, to you know get our overdraft facility uh, down to the level that he wanted it, and then by the end of that week we had to find another bank, um, and so uh, you know so fighting to survive is, is is it goes without saying, but it's absolutely critical, um, and uh, and and most companies do not survive, and um, uh, so. Um, uh, so I think the, you know, the important thing to learn from it is you're, you're going to learn an enormous amount by actually, you know, building a company. Uh, and if you if you don't survive, you're one of, uh, you know, like eight out of ten companies do not survive. So you know, so you shouldn't feel completely downhearted from it. You should you, you should learn from that and and just try again. Um, and that's what limited companies are for. They're, it's there to encourage entrepreneurs to, uh, you know, give it a go. Do everything you can to survive. Work. Day and night to make sure you do survive, um, but if if it doesn't, if you don't, just you know pick yourself up again and try again, um, and keep and keep trying until you finally succeed. And you know there are many big entrepreneurs in the world who've had uh, companies that have failed in 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 their lifetimes. Um, thanks, thanks for that. Um, I think I'd like to ask one last question to each of you, and um, and then ask the other offices to join the, the Q&A. Um, first to Richard. Richard, I know you believe uh, business is a big force for good. Um, can you tell us what you've been doing in that area recently? I think you're doing some really inspiring stuff. Um, could you share that with us? Well, uh, I mean, business, business in itself uh, is a force for good, because what you're doing is you're creating Something which is going to make a positive difference to other people's lives. So, just just being an entrepreneur, uh, I think, is a, is a very positive thing. Um, having said that, I think if if you are an entrepreneur and you've and you've built a successful company, um, you can use your entrepreneurial skills to look at some of the you know seemingly intractable problems of this world and uh, and see if you can address them. Um, which sometimes politicians or social workers may not be. Fully equipped to do, um, and at you know Virgin, we've we've incubated um, you know quite a lot of not-for-profit organisations like the Carbon War Room, uh, like the Elders, um, uh, you know like uh, the, the the Oceanic Elders, like like um, the B Team, which is uh, our newest 
not for profit, um, which is designed at trying to get companies around the world um, not just to think about uh, the bottom line, which is very important, but also to think about um, you know the, the, their 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 environmental uh, footprint, also to think about uh, people and and um, and. Uh, and, and trying to unite businesses to try to get out there and get on top of the world's problems. And I think if, if business, if, if bus enough business leaders can work in it, um, we can get on top of the world's problems. Um, but we need it, we need every uh, every every business in the world to give it a go. And uh, Elon, as Richard said, you know, each business, each entrepreneur is a, even if it's for profit, uh, can be a force for good. And you've got a lot of work. Uh, to prove that as well, there were a lot of my friends told me to ask you about Hyperloop. I just thought if you'd share a few of the latest updates on that. I think you've got an update August 12th coming up, but I wondered if there's anything you could share with this exclusive audience. Well, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, we'll just answer the first part of the question. I mean, a company is, is, like I said, a group of people. Who, um, Working together to create a product or service. So as long as that, as long as they're not protected by some sort of legislation or or somehow you know have a an unreasonable monopoly on things, then they only exist to the degree that they're they're doing useful things for their fellow you know for for other other people out there. You know, and uh, so I think it's you know good, forceful good. I mean, there's there's a bit of subjectivity as to what what good represents, but but it's fair to say that 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 most companies only exist if they're doing something useful, um, and and uh, I mean that's the way I certainly view view things for for my companies. Is like how how do we how do we make things that people would would really like and uh, would find really useful in their lives? That's that's the the goal. It's really pretty commonsensical, I think. Um, and uh, and then well, let's see on the hyperloop. Um, what can I say? Um, when I was trying, you know, the, 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 I could say a bit about you know, where, where the hyperloop is coming from and what I think the goal would, of, of such a thing would be. Um, I, I originally sort of started thinking about it when I read about California's um, high-speed rail project, which was somewhat disappointing because it's not a very high-speed rail. It's got an average speed of, I think, 125 or 130 miles an hour. Um, and, and takes a slightly circuitous route uh, from Los Angeles to San Francisco. Um, and so it's actually worse than, let's say, taking the plane. I, I mean, I'd much rather take a Virgin America plane than, than take the train. And so it seems like, why, why would one want to do um, a, a big expensive project like that, which is slower than alternatives and likely, I think, will be ex more expensive than alternatives? Um, and um, and so I, I get a little sad when 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 things aren't getting better in the future. And so, and, and uh, another example would be like the the the, the Concorde being retired and the fact that there's no supersonic passenger transport. Um, I think it's, I think that's quite sad because um, you you want the future to be better than the past, and or at least I I, I do quite a bit. And um, anyway, so I, was, I got to thinking about what what could be the best way to get from uh, LA to San Francisco, or essentially what what would be a the, the optimal solution in the special case of a city pair that is less than say a thousand miles um, and where there's a great deal of traffic between those, those city pairs. I think once you get to the sort of thousand mile range you, may, you should just take a supersonic plane. Um, <clears throat> but less than that uh, you, you spend a lot of time climbing and descending. So, uh, so since the climb descent part is significant for routes less than a thousand miles or 1,500 kilometers, or 1,600 kilometers, I should say, um, it, it may be better to uh, figure some other means of, of doing it. So, 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 what, so one necessary, so, so if you think of like the, the criteria, apologies if this is going on too long, just cut me off. Um, no, no, so, um, the, the, uh, you have to first say, well, what is the right question to ask? Like, how should this be framed? And I think you, you want a transport mechanism that, let's say, is, on roughly twice as fast as the next best alternative that costs less, that is safer, um, that is not subject to weather, um, and, um, and 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 is more convenient. Like if, if there was such a thing, then 
obviously, I think most people would take it. In fact, it would it would increase the travel between such city pairs uh, because of, of the increased convenience. Uh, and 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 you know, so you, I mean, you could conceivably live in San Francisco and work in LA. Um, so uh, you know, just as the Uni when the Union Pacific joined California, people were saying, "Oh, there's hardly anyone that lives in California. This um, this whole railway line is a silly thing." And uh, they calculated the number of people that would travel as being very low because there wasn't any anywhere to go to. Um, but that was because people were going by wagon, <laughs> which is extremely inconvenient. Um, anyway, so the, so the the hyperloop, you know, is something that um, would go e effectively faster than the speed of sound, um, but you know, because you'd have to travel at an, an average speed of around 700 miles an hour from LA to San Francisco to to get there in half an hour, um, and. Um, It, it it does involve it does involve a tube, but not a not a vacuum tube. Um, but a frictionless. Uh, not fr no, it's really difficult. Not frictionless, uh, <laughs> but very low friction. Um, anyway, the, the the full details. Sorry for the laborious answer. Uh, will be on Monday. Okay. Thanks a lot. Um, it seems like you're both. Uh, have frustration with something as a starting point. I don't know if that's a fair observation. I think I heard Richard say that once, um, but that's interesting to observe and to listen to as we uh, hear you both speak. But be before I, th I, th I, th I think, yeah, yeah sorry. Ma ma many of the best ideas, many of the best ideas come out of personal frustration, and I I'm sure a lot of the entrepreneurs who are listening have started their businesses from from personal frustration, which is an admirable way of starting a business. Absolutely. Yeah. Frustration is good. That's my one thing I'll, I'll note down from this. So, um, okay, I know there's lots of burning questions in the other locations to both of you. Um, I'll start with Johannesburg, Branson Center for Entrepreneurship. Gavin. Hi, hi Gavin. Hi, hi Richard. Hi, hi I'm Richard. It's Gavin from the Branson Center here in South Africa. Since we moved here to our new home in Johannesburg in October 2010. The Branson Center has trained and provides continuous support to 500 entrepreneurs from 460 businesses spanning 21 industries. And today we have 70 of those entrepreneurs hanging out with you here at the center. Before we ask our questions, Richard, we look forward um, to spending some time with you when you next visit your center here in Johannesburg. And to Elon, this serves as a, a formal invitation for you to visit us here at the center when you next travel to South Africa. All right, sounds good. I look forward to visiting it. Yeah, yeah. Our first question is for you, Elon, and it's from our Branson Center entrepreneur, Denise Sherman. Hi, Elon. I'm yeah. Denise Sherman, owner of Customized Training Videos. My question to you, you've worked with a wide range of teams and you actively encourage disrupting the status quo. What is your secret to keeping a team of disruptors working well together? Um, well, I think it's important that everyone understands exactly what the mission is, you know, what the, what the goal is, and that when they join the company, that they're bought into that overall goal. Um, as long as people, as long as that's that that goal is clearly de defined and, and and understood, and and people are, are saying yes, they agree with that goal when they join the company. Um, so they're not, they're not just joining, you know, for, for a salary or something like that, but they believe in in, in what the company is doing. Then I think. Um, you can always go back to them and say, "Hey, look, if, if if their activity is not aligned with with the company, you can say, hey, you need to change your behavior in this particular way." Um, and then they usually do. On, on rare occasions, when somebody does not, then you have to be prepared to let them go from the team. You know, because it, it 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 doesn't work if 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 um, if the team is is, is at cross purposes. So, um, I, I think that's that's really important. Um, and, and, and the fundamental job of the of, of the CEO is is I think is is vector alignment is getting getting everyone aligned and allowing them to work to their maximum potential, um, and making sure that people look forward to coming to work in the morning, um, and and the result is that people don't want to leave because they're enjoying themselves and they're they're making progress and that's what people generally want to do. Thank you. Thanks, Denise. 
Hi Richard, um, your question is from another brand and Centre entrepreneur, CPU SLMB. Hi Richard, I'm Chris Lambert, the owner of Blessings Hotels. I believe every person ha was created to live a meaningful life with purpose. My question for you is, as a business tech, do you feel like you have a, a, ris a responsibility to change people's lives through entrepreneurship? Sorry, uh, uh, your, your voice cut out just as you were asking the question. Could you say it again? As a, as a business tycoon, do you feel like you have a responsibility to change people's lives through entrepreneurship? To change the world through entrepreneurship? Yes. Is that right? Yeah. Um, yes, I think so. I mean, I think, I think that um, uh, I, I think all, every single one of you who, who are building your businesses um, uh, are making a difference in the world, um, and and there will come a time uh, once you've built your business where you can make uh, an enormous difference in the in the world. Um, uh, but you know, initially, when you're building your business, you just got to make sure they they survive. Um, obviously, try to do things you, you're you're proud of in in the process. Um, but you're not going to be in a position where uh, you know you could you, you're really going to make a massive difference in the world as as you're building the business. The important thing is that you survive. Uh, and, and, and build your business um, in, in the first stage. But once you've actually got your business established, uh, then, then I think you can uh, you know, think, what, what can I do to make a real big difference in the world? And, uh, and as I said earlier, um, you know, I would really encourage you to aim, aim one day to do that. Um, tell me, what, what's the business you're doing? Uh, I, I'm into student accommodation. And how are you how are you managing? Yeah, well, there are challenges, you know, as a small uh, and as as small and as we are running small companies, there are a lot of challenges. So I would say the center has been really helpful f to us by providing us with uh, the tools that can take our companies to another level. So, well, I, I look forward to seeing you in October when I come and uh, wish you all, all the best with it. And uh, I'm sure Elon does as well. Absolutely. Thanks, sir. I can't wait to see you. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Sapira. And uh, finally, from Asset the Branson Center, it's a very special thanks to John from Google, Google South Africa, who has pulled together this event with the, with the many parts today. So over to you, John. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, hi, my question's for Elon. Uh, I've always heard that one of the most important things in getting a business right uh, is, is extreme focus on one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be really interested to understand how you keep focus on so many different projects <laughs> and different businesses and still maintain such velocity. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that it's, it's certainly true that um, if you're, particularly at the early stages of, of a company, you have such limited resources. If you don't focus them then, then, and you diffuse them, then your chances of success are much less. Um, so it's uh, uh, and, and I, I would definitely not recommend uh, try, trying to create two companies at once, um, as as sort of happened with SpaceX and Tesla. Um, in fact, it wasn't originally my intention to run Tesla, but I I, I had to do so in the end. Um, but um, yeah, but I, I really wouldn't recommend it. Honestly, it's it's quite a lot of it's it's more work than yeah, it's it's too much. <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> so I, I uh, yeah, I would really strongly advise someone to just focus on on one company uh, as and, and and throw as many hours at it, as it as you possibly can. Um, really work, work work morning till night. Think about it in your sleep. Uh, seven days a week, no breaks, nothing. That's what you should do when you're starting a company. Um, and when I did my first two companies, Zip2 and then PayPal, I mean that's that's was 100% uh, focused, and um, yeah, I, I, I yeah, I was always hoping that Tesla wouldn't be necessary, but it was it, when 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 it became clear that the big car companies were not going to do electric cars by themselves, then um, that's when it became necessary. I think oh. um, can I, can I add something there? <laughs> Please. Um, sorry. No, I, I think the, uh, 
uh, the absolute the, the absolute key. I mean, it, I mean, I would agree with everything Elon said. But then the other thing I think you've just got to do is uh, quite early on in the in the uh, uh, in, in your company's history is fi find somebody to run that company on a day-to-day -day basis um, who is hopefully better than you. I mean, and most people just don't have find the time to go out there and find that really good person, and they get completely over. You know, they can, they, they stay completely immersed in it, and um, but you know, but finding the time to find somebody else to then run it on a day-to-day -day basis, then you know, frees you up to think about the bigger picture, frees you up maybe to move into another venture. Uh, frees you up to have a family life, uh, frees you up to look after your body and you know to make make sure you're healthy and fit. Um, and uh, and you know if you try to do everything yourself for too long, uh, you 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 you'll run yourself down. And you're not necessarily the best person, uh, you know, to to run the company on a day-to-day -day basis. There's, you can always find somebody as good as yourself or, or better than yourself. Thank you very you much. Say, it, doesn't look, it, doesn't, it doesn't look like he agrees with me. <laughs> well, no, it's uh, I, I, unfortunately I was not successful in doing that. I tried that at Tesla a few times, but uh, it was not successful. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe at some point in the future. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Elon, for your insights. And we look forward to seeing you at the Ransom Center in South Africa soon. Back to you, Yonsha. Thanks, John. Um, I think we've got Pete Wood now from Newcastle. From uh, startup loans, Pete, can you hear me? Hi, yes, I can. Hi, guys. Um, first of all, yeah, we're from Virgin Money. We're based in uh, a not so sunny Newcastle, unfortunately, in the northeast of England. Um, so, yeah, I'm Pete Wood. Um, I look after um, social enterprise projects for Virgin Money. And one of the schemes we're involved in is the startup loan scheme, which offers uh, low cost, low finance and mentoring for young budding entrepreneurs um, and I just so happen to have three of them with me uh, this afternoon. Um, so I'll start by introducing uh, Claire on my right. Um, Claire's running a hair and beauty training company called um, n the number one the training number one academy. Training, yeah. yeah. Um, and we have uh, Nikki. Uh, Nick runs um, a food and nutrition business which is just starting off called Optimal You and also at the end, we've got Dan. Dan's in the process of setting up uh, a rather unusual business, which is a community cinema, um, and that kicks off in the middle of September. So good luck with that. And the first question we've got is actually from Nick. So Nick, over to you, and I think it's directed at Elon. Yes, thanks, Pete. And hi, Richard and Elon. It's great to have the opportunity to talk to you both today. Um, I'm a positive psychologist, and my business, Optimal You, is centered on overcoming client barriers to personal growth. So Elon, I'd like to ask what the hardest thing is that you've had to do in business to date. The hardest thing? Um, hmm. Well, I guess there's two ways to think of hard. Like, you know, it's one sort of um, emotionally hard, I suppose. You know, what was sort of really emotionally hard and what was kind of hard work? Um, I think the most difficult emotionally hard thing was was in 2008, which I talked about a little bit, where, where both Tesla and SpaceX were um, in dire need of, 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 of money to keep going. Um, and I'd basically run out of the money that, almost run out of the money that, that I'd gotten from my, the sale of PayPal to eBay. And, um, and then I had a very difficult decision to make, which is that I could either um, take the money that I had left and allocate it to one company, um, or 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 two, and um, anyway, that, that that was really difficult because if if I'd um, you know if if I if I if I'd only allocated it to one company, then it's it's sort of like you got two kids, and it's like you you know you only have you're not you're not sure if 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 you if you spread the food around, did, will, will both kids make it? So. It could, would have been a very unfortunate thing if both companies had failed um, because I'd spread what, what little I had left between the two. That was the most difficult thing, I think, emotionally. Um, and then, you know, hard work-wise, I think it was just that um, for, for a few, well, since then and, and, and continuing to now, that uh, it's just running two companies directly is extremely difficult. Um, so the 
the workload is, is super high. Um, but I, I, I do think things are, are getting a bit better on that front, um, particularly this year. So I think that that's probably how to answer that. Yeah. Thank you. OK, thanks. And Dan, you had a question as well? Yeah. Hi, I'm Dan Ellis. And I'm opening a charitable community cinema, Jam Jar Cinema, in my hometown of Whitley Bay, which is really exciting. More than that, we work with a lot of volunteers who each bring with them really creative and exciting ideas. So my question's for you, Richard. And when someone comes to you with an idea or a proposal for a partnership, what criteria do you use to determine the viability of that idea or the partnership? Well, I think the, the most important thing is is the uh, is the individual um, whether whether or not the um, uh, whether or not you feel the individual is capable of doing the idea. I mean, there are many many people who have uh, similar ideas and great ideas. Um, it's just um, whether, whether whether they can actually deliver that idea. And um, so you know, so, so you know, trying to work out whether the person uh, has. has you know, will 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 work 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 all the hours that needed to deliver it. Whether they're good uh, motivator of other people, um, and uh, and uh, you know, so uh, as with it, it was a, a company is simply a group of people, and you just want to be absolutely sure that the person that uh, you know, the person who's coming to you with the idea, uh, is somebody that um, you 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 feel can deliver, um, and then everything else flows from that. Great. Okay, thanks, guys. And that's our questions done, I think. Cheers. Okay, then now it's uh, Virgin Mobile Colombia. Hi there. Hi. The lively bunch. Hi, how are you doing, Yoka? Uh, Guido, <laughs> I think. Guido, yeah. you had a question, right? Yeah. Yes, I am Guido Saconi, I'm of Marketing of uh, Virgin Mobile Colombia. Uh, we're just starting our fifth month of operation. Uh, thankfully, we have had. Uh, lots of success, but even greater fun. And today we're very happy to be proud to be here with uh, Andy for the Future, uh, which is an initiative that Yvonne Cuello leads. Hi, hi, I'm Yvonne. I'm from uh, Andy for the Future. We are an entrepreneurship program that has presence in five cities, and we are around 300 entrepreneurs. And here we five of the, of the 300, Esteban, Camilo, Diego, and Felipe. Uh, we hope to see you down here soon to, to meet all the amazing things that are happening here in Colombia. So I have one question for Richard. Um, why do you think big companies and corporations should support and get involved in entrepreneurship and how? Um, well, first of all, I'm looking, looking forward to coming to Colombia later this year and look, look forward to seeing you all there. Um, uh, and it's also wonderful that Colombia's uh, back, back on its feet again, and that um, some of the you know, the nightmares we've been through seem to be uh, you seem to be able to put in, into the past. Um, uh, the oh my god, I've forgotten what question you asked now. What was the question? Yeah. <laughs> can, can you say it again, please? <laughs> Is that as we are part of a, a national business association that we we are called Andy for the future because we we want to build the next generation of companies in Colombia. I was wondering what do you think like the big companies and, and corporations should get involved in in and support entrepreneurship and how? Uh, I, yeah, I mean I, I, I certainly feel that uh, people like Elon and myself who are fortunate enough to um, you know have, have, have had the, the fortunate breaks that have, that have given us the success that we've got um, need to help other people um, who um, uh, who are trying to build their companies, um, and you know whether it's through you know, entrepreneurial schools, whether it's giving up. You know, I mean, Elon's just given up an hour of his time to you know talk, talk to people around the world today. Um, you know, um, sharing sharing his ideas. Um, you know, whether it's campaigning with governments to try to make life easier for entrepreneurs. And um, you know, I think there there are, there are plenty of ways. I think that that those entrepreneurs who've been successful can give back by. Um, helping other people, uh, you know, get get set up. Um, you know, whether it's even by, you know, putting some money aside to help to help young entrepreneurs, um, you know, uh, get set up. Um, I mean, it, very very small amounts of money uh, can be all that it takes to set up a company. I mean, I I I, I set Virgin up on on a two hundred uh, pounds that my 
um, mother had managed to claim with it from a necklace which she'd handed into the police station uh, and uh, nobody claimed it and, and she gave me the money and, and, and it is literally very small amounts of money like that they, they can be the start uh, of, of what can turn into uh, empires you know many many years later anyway good luck to you all in Colombia <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let Esteban ask another question and, and introduce one of our entrepreneurs. And he's actually from Medellin. So I'll let Esteban speak. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of all the entrepreneurs here in Colombia. First of all, I want to thank you, Ilo and Richard, for your time and for this terrific experience of sharing your, your experiences with us. My question is for Elon, and uh, it's about talent. It is a fact that talent is the most important asset in any company. However, for us, for the entrepreneurs, in a starting phase, it is difficult to recruit and retain talent, not only for, for the economic perspective. So my question is, what are your recommendations to retain and recruit the best talent in that critical moment of the company, which is the starting phase. Um, well, it's, it's certainly true that I mean that, uh, the talent is is extremely important. I mean, it's really just like a like a sports team. You know, if you've got um, the, the the team that will win is the one that has the best uh, individual players, uh, but, but but then there's a multiplier by how those play, how well those players work together, um, and and the the, the strategy uh, that they employ. Uh, collectively, so um, in in order to rec rec recruit the best people, I think you have to have a very compelling goal that you, you're going to to you know the goal for the company. It's if, they, if you put yourself in the shoes of someone who's who's say talented at the at the world level, um, then they they're going to w want to do something that really makes a difference. That that really like this is a company that's going to be something significant. Um, that stands to reason because uh, you know that that's what somebody who, who's at that level when I mean, it's always self-defining really. Um, so you have to have uh, um, they, they have they have they have to believe that that this is going to have a has the potential for for a great outcome, and they they have to uh, believe in whoever the leader of the company is. Um, so that's it's critical that that they that you convince them that. Um, that, that you're, you're the right guy to work with, um, and that, that's a very that can be a, a very difficult thing, particularly when you're trying to uh, attract people from existing companies, because then you're trying to convince them that they should give up something which is a, a sort of a relatively sure thing for the uncertainty of a startup. Um, and uh, yeah, so they have to believe that it's going to be interesting, that it's going to change the world, and that that the their the, their efforts will be rewarded uh, financially. But the, that that's that's arguably the least important, but but it still still should be a factor. Thanks a lot. Back to you, Jim. Thank you. Uh, last but not least, bye. Last but not least, uh, we're going to Montego Bay, and the Brazil. The noisy Center. ones. <laughs> Sorry, the noisy ones. Go on, show us your noise. <laughs> Hi, hi everyone from Branson Centre Caribbean in warm sunny Jamaica. Um, you know, it's great to hang out with you again, Richard. Hi, Elon and Hello. everybody else out there. Hi. Um, since we last hung out, Richard, we have grown significantly. Um, in fact, we've doubled in number with 75 entrepreneurs in house now. Um, we have a few of them sitting here with us along with team members. Hey. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and um, we really wouldn't miss this for anything. So as we're the last ones, we want to move on quickly. We'll start with our entrepreneur, Brian Brown's question. Hi, Richard. This question is for you. The name of my company is Livewire Act, a disruptive marketing and entertainment company. Now, as an entertainer and socially active citizen, I'm increasingly aware of the influences and temptations that can come at you. So my question is, what is the most challenging part of balancing, changing the world personally and professionally without allowing the world to change you. 
Richard? <laughs> right, just uh, <laughs> that was me, was it? Um, what was the most? You just said it once again, and I'll I'll try to get it. I'll try to get. Uh, what was okay. the most? What is the most challenging part of balancing changing the world professionally and personally, without in turn allowing the world to change who you are okay. as a person? Yeah, I mean, I think I think. Uh, I, I love Elon to, to give to give his answer as well, but I, I, I think the m most important thing is um, you know, not not to let not to let uh, your, your business completely absorb absorb your life a hundred percent, especially if you've got a family or if, you know if you've got a partner, you've got children. Um, so so you know trying to, trying to get a balance uh, a, a balance in your life is re really important. Um, Trying to make sure you do have the time to look after yourself is really really important, um, and and as I said earlier, uh, it is just so important that you surround yourself with other people who can share share the burden with you, uh, people who you can enjoy the good times with, uh, get through the bad times with, um, and who who can take some of the load off your shoulders, and uh, and so you know I, th I think as a good leader does not try to do everything themselves, a good leader. Uh, is somebody who's willing to, um, you know, to, to uh, uh, you know, let, let you know, let let, let other let, let other people uh, make mistakes as well as well as make good things, um, and um, so I think as er as early as possible, just find you know find find people to work with you who can, uh, you know, share share the burden and um, uh, and don't feel that you're you're the only person that knows all the answers. So on to our second question, which is from entrepreneur Dwayne Samuels. Uh, hello, Richard. Hi, Elon. Uh, I'm from Zormis. My name is Dwayne Samuels. And my question is for you, Elon. Um, you've been regarded as today's Henry Ford, and some would even say you're the closest thing we have to Tony Stark. Um, <laughs> you're conquering transportation and uh, its space and land, and also you help to create a platform for money. Um, what what's next apart from Hyperloop? What's next? Uh, robots? Uh, tr teleportation? <laughs> <laughs> teleportation would be cool, certainly. Um, uh, the, well, I I think I'm somewhat. Um, I, I probably have a bit too much on my plate as it is with with SpaceX and Tesla, um, and then I I still have to allocate a little bit of time to uh, to Solar City. Um, although fortunately, in the case of Solar City, there there are some really great guys there that that run it. Uh, Day to day and and are just fantastic. So, I mostly just show up to hear the good news at uh, Solo City, um, and uh, yeah. So, but as far, as far as I mean, the thing that I think would be, um, if I were to start another company in the future, which I don't think would be anytime soon, um, it would be uh, in to, to try to create an aircraft that is a supersonic, vertical takeoff and landing electric jet. Um, I think that's the that's sort of the ultimate form of transport, um, with with the with the exception of, of what I was mentioning earlier, which is um, city city pairs that are really close together and have a huge amount of traffic between them. That's where the, the hyperloop could, could could win would win on that special case. But in the general case, it's it's got, it's, it's a supersonic vertical takeoff and landing electric plane, um, uh, because uh, obviously it would have some environmental benefits being electric and be quieter. Um, supersonic. It would be very fast, um, and if you fly high enough and have the right um, um, geometry of the plane, you can make uh, make the sonic boom no louder than current planes. And then the vertical takeoff and landing part would mean that you could land much closer to your destination instead of landing at these huge airports with with super long runways. Um, and uh, I think that would really be great. I, I like I wish somebody would do that. Um, and so, if somebody doesn't do that, maybe at some point in the future I will. Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay, thank right. you very much for answering our questions. And back to you, Yonka. Thanks, Sharon. Thank so, uh, we've got around three minutes left. I guess uh, one thing, one thing, other is one, one thing we haven't done is, is does Richard or Elon have any questions for each other or advice for each other? Well, we know each other pretty fast. well, actually. We've been friends for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, I always enjoy Richard's company. It's it's a um, he's always a great guy to hang out with, actually. Um, it, usually in real life, of course. 
um, <laughs> as opposed to... And on, also virtually, yeah. I hope. <laughs> yeah, virtually too. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, I, I, I've had great times hanging out and uh, uh, having a, a bushwhacker, which is a, a good drink in, uh, in uh, the Virgin Islands. Um, or a Virgin Mary. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> So uh, yeah, yeah. No, I think um, anyway. Norman, uh, have enormous respect uh, for Elon and in, in, in incredible what what he's achieved. Uh, he's a horribly young man. I hate him for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, uh, and, and, and obviously has 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 enormous amount um, enormous amount more to more to more to achieve. And uh, looking looking forward to watching with, with fascination and interest what you know uh, what what what's what's next. Um, uh, I, I just hope that um, you know we talk we talk about delegation. I hope he can find some really wonderful people to uh, to help him, so he can. He's got five uh, five, I think, children, all all boys, all under the age of four. Uh, uh, well, no, they're uh, a bit older now, but uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> when you first saw them, they were. <laughs> all right, and uh, but uh, anyway, he just uh, yeah, just uh, we need to. He needs to. He needs to. Um, uh, yeah, I hope I hope you can find lots of time for them in the years well, to come. And uh, but, uh, so he's just got to find got to find some good people to help you. I, I think. I, in the, in I, I agree. I agree. My, 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 <laughs> New Year's, my, my New Year's resolution was to um, was to to spend a bit more time on on fun and, and family this year. So um, I, I think good. I'm making a little bit of progress. And I, I I think you're absolutely right about that. So. Right. Well, no, uh, hopefully we'll see more of you then. And uh, and and to all the, all the people list, listening in, thanks so much for your time and good luck to all your uh, all your adventures. And and and, and the, the fun thing, you know, listening to somebody like Elon, you know, with you all all talking about you know businesses which may be only you know ten thousand dollars or five thousand dollars or um, you know, but out of those, uh, you can start thinking about vertical takeoff planes one day. I, I mean, it, but you have to obviously start. Start from scratch, build it, and, and it takes many, many, many years to get there. But uh, but 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 dream big, and uh, one day one day those dreams hopefully can can uh, become reality. And uh, good luck to all of you, and thanks very much for your time. Absolutely. Thank you. And thanks to thank Google. You. <laughs> thank you, and thanks, yes. John, for organizing this. Thank thanks, you so much, Richard and Elon. Cheers. Right, thanks. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye.